Hey guys, it's Davey here from phonebuff.com and in this video I'm going to show you Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean running on my Samsung Galaxy S3. This is actually the T-Mobile variant of the S3 and I'm going to be running it with the CM10 nightly build for this particular phone. CM stands for Cyanogen Mod just in case you didn't know. Um, Considering the fact that it is a nightly build, it does mean that there are some issues here and there. It's not quite yet a finished product, but those will be addressed until as soon as uh, it is an official ROM. I'll go ahead and power this guy on for the meantime. Show you guys how the boot up animation looks. So you saw a quick little Samsung splash screen. Then we're gonna see the Galaxy S3 splash screen right over here, like you would normally on the stock, you know, 4.0.4 with TouchWiz. But of course, now we have the Cyanogen Mod uh, boot up animation, which looks really, really nice, by the way. Um, I definitely like it, you know, it looks nice and clean. Uh, boot up time is relatively quick on this ROM. You can see it's already done loading. And uh, we'll go ahead and go into the settings first thing so you guys could verify that it is running Android 4.1.1. So go to About Phone, Android version 4.1.1. We'll tap on this guy a bunch of times and you can see got the Jelly Bean Easter egg and you know, flip these guys around like you would on the Galaxy Nexus uh, with that stock Jelly Bean ROM. Hit home and takes you right to the home screen really, really fast. I mean, pretty much, you know, Jelly Bean's really, really fast on the Galaxy Nexus with its 1.2 gigahertz processor, one gig of RAM. You can only imagine how fast it is on a 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 with two gigabytes of RAM. I mean, this thing just flies. Uh, pretty much everything you do opens up, you know, instantly. And keep in mind, you know, all these apps haven't been opened yet, so they're not open in the background. They're just flying through. Um, really, really nice performance. I'll go ahead and show you uh, the pre-installed applications that come with CM10. So first thing you'll notice is Apollo here at the top left. This is basically like Google Music in a sense, but the difference is it actually gets your album art, which is pretty cool. Um, the reason why I say it's like Google Music is because when you actually play a song, so I'll go ahead and play a song really quick, and uh, we'll turn the volume down really quick. And we'll go to the now playing. You see, it looks a lot like Google Music. Of course, you know, in the notification bar, it looks just about the same as you would see with Google Music. So I'll go ahead and back out of there. That's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and go to the DSP manager now. This is basically allows you to uh, enable audio hacks like boosting the bass. Uh, you can do this for the Bluetooth, for the regular speaker, and the headset. Of course, you have the equalizer here, and you can, you know, adjust this however you like. I'll go ahead and hit cancel for now. Uh, going on. Quadrant here, I, I installed myself. Raw Manager, I installed myself as well to flash this thing in the first place. And uh, the other app that you'll see is Torch, basically it's just a little flashlight. Pretty cool, you can do strobe mode and uh, high brightness. Doesn't seem to work on the Galaxy S3. I mean, gives you a warning, I hit accept, and it doesn't actually turn on the flashlight, so I just leave it off and it works. But anyway, those are the pre-installed apps. Google apps were actually not installed. So for example, Google Now, uh, even Gmail and things like that were installed with the ROM alone. You have to flash those separately. So I went ahead and did that. I mean, I can't imagine why somebody wouldn't, but I went ahead and did that and uh, Google Now works. I'll go ahead and show you how that works really quick. Who is the president of the United States of America? I gotta turn the volume up so it actually will display it. So didn't work there for some reason. Let's try it again. Let's say, uh, how tall is Michael Jordan? So 6'6". Six, six. So you guys can see it works just like it does on the Galaxy Nexus with that stock Jelly Bean ROM. So it works really well. Um, we'll go ahead and try another one. Remind me to walk the dog in 15 minutes. So setting alarm, etc. So pretty cool. Um, of course, that's probably the main reason why I wanted to get Jelly Bean so bad on my phone other than the uh, speed performance enhancements like with uh, Project Butter. But we'll go ahead and go on to the next thing. We'll go into the uh, actual settings now. So let's go to menu, we'll go to settings, and let's look at you know what's different on this ROM compared to a stock Jelly Bean ROM. So up here with the wireless networks, it's pretty much the same, so I'm not gonna go over that. But you can see right here it says interface. So this allows you to change the user interface from the launcher, so the, from the launcher you can go to your home screen, change all these different options on your home screen. For example, let's say you don't want it to say camera right there, right? That little label, you can go into the settings and go to launcher and then home screen and you go down to hide icon labels, enable it and boom, it's gone. So that's a pretty cool little feature. We'll go ahead and go back and uh, show you a few more you could disable the search bar so if you don't want that google now search bar to show you could disable that so very customizable i mean that's really what you know rooting your phone and flashing custom roms is all about you get a whole bunch of options here this is the launcher you know go to the drawer app drawer you get more options generally you know you could do the auto screen rotate so that way 
even your home screen can rotate like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll go on to the next section. Whoops, went to the phone app. Go to the next section, which is the lock screen. So tap on lock screen. Of course, you have your screen security, regular screen lock with the face unlock and all that good stuff. But you also could uh, do things like delaying the, scro the screen lock. You could press the menu button to unlock the screen. So instead of having to unlock like that, you could just tap menu, which, you know, if you're not that big on security, I mean, you just want it to not pocket dial, that might be a good option for you. Uh, some other options there. Weather, you can see, uh, is enabled. So what that means is when you go to the lock screen, it'll actually give you the weather. Let's see if it's actually working right now. So yeah, as you can see, Laguna Hills, 80 degrees. Pretty cool, nice clean look to it too. Uh, this wallpaper, by the way, is a CM10 wallpaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold uh, on the home screen. You see it says Cyanogen Mod Wallpapers, and then there's an the option for no wallpaper. So it's just a black uh, wallpaper, basically. But I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and show you some of the ones that come on here. So pretty nice little uh, options of wallpapers, as you can see. Some nice images here, and uh, pretty much the you know Cyanogen Mod. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with this one. I'll go back to the settings. So uh, while I'm here, let's show you the notification bar. So if you notice right now, the screen kind of just uh, flickered a little. That's one of the bugs currently with this version of the ROM. Of course, that can be fixed tomorrow or the next you know, nightly build that comes out, but that's something to keep in mind. Notification bar, you have these, this basically this power widget that lets you uh, have your wireless toggles right over here for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. This is actually my screen brightness and I have a little flashlight toggle, which is pretty cool. Um, you can actually customize what's on there too within the uh, Settings. So before I get into that, those finish this off. You see themes. I don't have any themes. I just have the one that came on it. So that's that. But under system, you could go to the status bar, and this is where you could change things like the battery percentage icon, uh, whether or not you want it to show the clock, and all the changes are instant. You don't have to restart the phone or anything like that. Um, again, battery, you know, status style. I'm gonna keep it at percentage, but you can make it a regular icon, or you can just hide it all together. Uh, brightness control. So for example, if I want to make it brighter or dimmer like that. I could do it. Um, I'll go ahead and. Disable that for right now though. And uh, let's go to the notification drawer because I said, you know, the power widget. So you can customize what buttons actually show up. So you can make it go to sleep, toggle 2G, 3G, whole bunch of wireless toggles over here, uh, toggle the orientation, bunch of stuff like that. So let's go ahead and back out of here for now. Um, you can also change the order. So for example, if I wanted my flashlight to be over here, I could do that. And you can see it's automatically reflected, you know, instantaneously. So really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and back out of here. You could also customize the wallpaper from here, but I'm not gonna do that. Font size, of course, that's nothing really special. Power menu, so basically right now on my power menu, I have power off, the reboot option, and the regular ones that you see with Jelly Bean. If I wanted an option for screenshot to show up there too, I could do that, so it'll just take a screenshot of wherever I am. If you don't wanna press the you know, hold down and power button, if you keep messing up, that's a cool little thing that you could do, profile switcher. So speaking of profiles, let's go ahead and show you what that is. So before I jump in there really quick though, let's go ahead and show you the hardware keys. Um, basically, you customize what these keys do over here by enabling them, uh, enabling the custom actions, and then like, for example, a long press on the menu button, I could have it, I could have it, you know, open up the voice search, for example. So say I'm here and I want it to open, instead of having to press this all the time, I can just press and hold this, and boom, it opens it up. So it's kind of cool to be able to have a physical button to actually do that function. Let's go back into the settings really quick, and uh, we'll go into, where were we? Where are settings? Oh, yeah, I was gonna show you the uh, profiles. So profiles, I don't know if you guys are familiar with HTC Sense. Basically, you know, with HTC Sense, you could customize, you know, your uh, options with your whole phone with a particular, they call it scene. Well, this is kind of the same. You know, you could choose whether or not, what connections you want to have. You could choose, you know, what volumes you want set, etc. All with the profile. So for one for default, one for home, one for night, one for when you're at work. Pretty cool options here. If you go to application groups, you could choose, you know, what you want each particular application to do. Go ahead and go out of there though. Let's see what else is uh, different. We have performance right over here. Get a big old warning right here. Basically it's like the set CPU app. You could change the processor, clock speed, etc. So I could choose what kind of governor it's using right now. It's on, on demand. I could choose the minimum and maximum CPU frequency. Can't go higher right now because I don't have a custom kernel on here, but uh, if I did, I might be able to push that further, set it on boot. So pretty cool to have that right there. Um, I think I missed something. There's an advanced tab right here. Um, this with a whole bunch of advanced options over here that you could you know mess with. But again, those are advanced. So I'm not going to go into it. Um, that's pretty much it for the settings. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like you know when you actually receive a text message because that's pretty cool. 
All right, so you can see I got a text message and uh, basically I have a text message right here. So this is my screenshot. I'm just gonna what, get rid of that guy really quick. You can see I have an option not only to open it, but I can do a quick reply or call the number that texts me. So if I want to do a quick reply, it opens up a little pop-up uh, box and I can reply right here instead of having to actually go into the messaging app, which is pretty nice. Uh, makes things a little bit easier. So I'll back out of there. Um, what else? What else is there? Oh yeah, the lock screen right here, you can actually customize, you know, if you don't want the camera, let's say you don't use the camera all that often, or say you don't want Google Now from here, you can actually customize that. So I can go back in here, let's go back to the settings. I thought I'd cover everything, but I knew I was missing something. And you know, with how many features this uh, ROM gives you, it's kind of, you know, hard not to. So let me find it really quick. It's under lock screen. You go to slider shortcuts, and basically let's go up. I could change it now from uh, being Google to, you know, let's say I wanted to go directly to a contact. Um, or direct dial, which is cool. If you call a particular person a lot, you can have them right from your lock screen, swipe up to go to them instead of you know going to Google Now, whatever. I'm gonna hit cancel because I actually like Google Now there. Um, another thing is you could have you know your calendar display events on the lock screen itself too. So I don't think I have any events in my lock in my calendar, and I, I don't. So anyway, that is pretty much it. I'm going to run a quadrant test just in case you guys want to see that. Um, honestly, it's just quadrant. It doesn't really. You know, I've, I've ran a few of them and it doesn't really make all that big of a difference, but I want to let you guys see that. So I'll go ahead and skip through this because this is boring to watch. All right, so the benchmark is done. You can see it scored a 46.41, so not really higher than, you know, what you'd expect. Um, sometimes it actually might be even a little bit lower, honestly. But honestly, as Quadrant, I mean, from the performance, you guys can see, you don't need a benchmark to show you that. I mean, everything is really, really fast. Um, CM10, you know, this nightly bill is a great way to have, you know, Jelly Bean, first of all. Second of all, that stock, you know, Android experience on your Samsung Galaxy S3. I mean, I'm waiting for a long time. I can't wait till, you know, it's official where all the bug fixes are, you know, done. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying this a lot. Just wanted to make this video guy for you guys so you guys can see what it looks like if you don't actually want to run to flash the uh, you know the nightly build on your phone because you know sooner or later you're gonna wanna flash the next one. So anyway, that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I just wanna give a big thanks to the CM team. And uh, I left the link in the description box below to the particular thread for this specific ROM. And also uh, within that post, you can find the link to the Google app so you can flash that separately too if you want to. But thank you for watching the video.